two systems of chords. Ten, Mississippi. Two, the fourteenth. Um, all right, Secretary of State. Secretary of State. Deals with everything outside of America. Deals with everything outside. Hi, and welcome back to Mr. Raymond's Civics EOC Academy, where today we are going to break down the United States Constitution. So last time we learned all about the preamble to the U.S. Constitution, which is the introduction to this famous document. And as we discussed the preamble, which is definitely the most well-known part of the Constitution, laid out the goals for this document and therefore for this new and improved federal government. Today we're going to look at the seven different sections of the Constitution, which are known as the Articles. And this leads to two of our benchmarks. Now, we are going to be using these benchmarks for several lessons and videos, so you're going to have a few chances to master these. Our first benchmark says to illustrate the structure and function of the three branches of government established in Articles 1, 2, and 3 with corresponding powers of government in the United States as established in the new Constitution. Now, that is definitely a mouthful. But... Really what it's saying is we are going to look at how this document is set up, especially focusing on the first three articles as these are the ones that set up the three branches. Now we will look at the other articles because these are going to help set up some information for later on this year as well. Our second benchmark says to describe how the Constitution limits the powers of government through separation of powers and checks and balances. And we've talked about separation of powers before. This was a theme of our Enlightenment philosopher Montesquieu and how the three branches really kind of check each other to make sure that no one has too much power. But we will be going over this in some detail throughout the year. And just a reminder, teachers, that this PowerPoint and lesson plans are available at Teachers Pay Teachers. Just search for Mr. Raymond's Civic COC Academy. So the Constitution, which is like a rule book or a blueprint for how the federal government is set up, is a major focus for our course. And it lays out the foundation not only for our country and the U.S. government, but for all of the things that you will be learning throughout the year. So I highly recommend that you take careful notes somewhere that you can come back to repeatedly. And I usually have my students make a flip book, which you see right up here. And that's something you might be interested in doing. So what do you need to learn today? Well, today is going to be a quick overview of how the Constitution is set up. In later videos, we are gonna go more in depth with the three branches and what was said about the branches in this Constitution and maybe what wasn't said. And this incredible document meant and continues to mean big things for not only our government, but for our way of life. So the first section following the preamble is Article 1, which establishes the legislative branch, and we call our legislative branch Congress. And this is the branch that makes laws in America. But that's not the only thing Congress does. They also have the power to declare war, create and collect taxes, raise and support the army and the navy, they can borrow money, they can coin money, which means to print or manufacture money, they regulate interstate commerce, establish post offices, grant patents and copyrights, and create lower courts. Now, is this everything that Congress does? No. But again, we will look at this branch in more detail down the road. Okay, so next comes Article 2. And Article 2 established the executive branch. And this is the branch that is headed up by the President of the United States. So the main job of the executive is to enforce the laws passed by Congress. In addition, the Constitution said that the President would be the commander-in-chief or the head of the military. It would give him or her, hopefully soon, the power to appoint or receive ambassadors, and ambassadors are representatives from or to other countries. The president would negotiate treaties, appoint Supreme Court and federal judges, and appoint officials. 
The Constitution also described the way in which the president would be elected. And we touched on this in a previous video. The system to elect the president is called the Electoral College. And if you didn't get it last time, we will review it again later. Finally, the Constitution stated that the president would report to Congress each year on what is called the State of the Union. Basically to state how the country was doing, what should be done in the future. And this is a big speech each year where the president lays out his plan for the upcoming year. Maybe you've seen your parents watching this speech on TV. So next year, pull up a seat next to them to sit down and check it out. Now, again, is this all the president does? No way. But yes, you know, we will be looking more into this later. And I hope you're picking up a theme here. The Constitution is pretty vague or lacking a lot of specifics. After all, it's only about 8,000 words. But this is how the document has lasted for so long. It was up to future generations to fill in the blanks. And we will be filling in the blanks, as I said, in upcoming videos. Next, we have Article 3, which created the judicial branch. And if Article 2 was pretty vague, and remember vague is a word that means there aren't a lot of specifics, well, Article 3 was extremely vague. It created a Supreme Court, and this would be the highest court in the land, and it describes some of the cases that this court would hear, including lawsuits between different states, say Florida wanted to sue Georgia over pollution in a river. That case would go directly to the Supreme Court. They would also hear cases involving ambassadors from other countries, say the ambassador of France was being sued. That would go right to the Supreme Court. Another thing that the Constitution said was that Congress would create quote-unquote lower courts, and, and this is what they did. They created federal courts throughout the country, and these courts would fall below the Supreme Court. Finally, what the Constitution said was that judges or justices would serve for life as long as they carried themselves with quote, good behavior, unquote. Now, what does that mean? It means that a Supreme Court justice can be removed, but this is very rare. It's only happened once. But it means that Supreme Court judges and justices, they would serve for a long time. In fact, you'll see some of them are really old. Now, is this all the Supreme Court does? <laughs> I think you're getting the theme here. No, of course not. In fact, it would take a future Supreme Court justice named John Marshall, and yes, again, we're gonna do this in another video. Are you getting the theme here? We just need to get an outline today. But let's add this part. John Marshall would establish the main job of the Supreme Court, which is to determine whether laws are constitutional or not. But, and here's why we're talking about it, the Constitution doesn't say anything about this. Now, as we mentioned during our benchmarks, it's really articles one through three that you need to know, but Let's look real quickly at the other ones because these will come up. Article 4 was about the relationship between the national government and the states. It basically said citizens shall enjoy the same quote unquote rights and privileges in other states, which means, you know, if I go from Florida to Georgia, that I have to get the same rights that the people from Georgia have while I'm there. It also said that Congress would add new states and that every state must have a quote republican unquote form of government now let's add this word republican republican it's not the republican party republican means a representative democracy and this is where you elect people who do the ruling for us right we have representatives who do all of the work of governing our society so that we don't have to okay republic a Republican form of government is a representative democracy. That's a word you need to know. The next section, Article 5, is about amendments. And amendments are additions or changes to the Constitution. The framers to the Constitution knew that there was bound to be a lot of issues that they didn't think of when they were writing this document. So they put in a way to make changes. And how would this be done? This is done by getting approval from two-thirds of Congress, and then the states would get involved. The amendment would need to be ratified by three-fourths of the states. And guess what? 
Yep, we're going to come back to that one because we're going to do a lot of amendments this year. Okay, quickly, Article 6. This is known as the Supremacy Clause. And remember, if something is supreme, it means it's bigger than or higher than or more powerful than. And what Article 6 was saying was that the Constitution is, quote unquote, the supreme law of the land. Therefore, if there was any disputes, the Constitution would win. Okay, the U.S. Constitution and federal laws are more powerful than state laws. And finally, Article 7 told the country how the Constitution would be ratified by the people and the states. Remember, ratified means to formally approve. So the framers of the Constitution were not saying, hey, this is our, our plan for government, so you guys deal with it. No, they were saying, here is our idea, but we want you, the people, and you, the states, to agree with it. So what it said was that every state would hold a convention or a gathering where the people would vote on the Constitution. Now, when would the Constitution go into effect? It would require nine out of 13 states to ratify. Again, we're gonna be going over this because it gets very political. And we'll see, this is the beginning of political parties who are fighting about the Constitution. Should we have it or should we not have it? Okay. So we're going to be picking up with that in a later video, but before we do, let's do a quick review. All right, so tell me, which article established the judicial branch? You know that one, right? Yes, Article 3. Which article established the executive branch? It's only 1 through 7. You know it? Yes, Article 2. What is one thing the legislative branch, aka Congress, can do besides make laws? Did you write them down? If you said declare war or pass taxes or deal with money, regulate interstate commerce, establish post offices, grant patents and copyrights, or create lower courts, you would be correct. What do you call a change to the Constitution? Come on. Yeah, it's an amendment. What is the name we discussed for a representative democracy? I did that one pretty quickly, but it's a good one to know and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, yes, a republican form of government is a representative democracy. We have people who rule us and we vote for them. All right, so coming up next, we're not done with the Constitution. We're gonna look at the principles that are written into this document. We could spend months and years on this document, but we won't luckily for you. So be sure that you subscribe. Again, teachers, this PowerPoint lesson plans with activities are available for sale for only a couple bucks at Teachers Pay Teachers, Mr. Raymond's EOC Academy. And thanks for watching, scholars.